Hi guys, this is Chantal from Lux Delight and today I'm going to show you how to make your own laundry detergent. Now this is something that I've been doing for years and after I started making my own soap, I started using my own soap and homemade laundry detergent. This is one of my coconut soap bars and it broke because I didn't cut it fast enough so you know when you make coconut uh, oil soap it hardens super fast and it gets super hard so you have to cut it pretty quick you, like probably two or three hours after um, I probably left it five hours and after the five hours this is what happened I'm going to show you how I do this most people when they make laundry detergent they use Zot or, or Fels Nafta but I used to use this but I really like the coconut oil soap I think it cleanses really well and I also know what's in it what we're going to do first is we're just going to cut them up a little bit into if I can <laughs> smaller chunks so that and then we're going to put them in the blender now the reason why I'm doing this is that is that so the blender does not have a hard time or the food processor does not have a hard time chopping them up if I can chop them up can I we'll see oh man this is super hard maybe using the corner is better whoa okay Oh, I forgot to mention, I have 14 ounces of this coconut uh, oil soap, which is equal to the same as this bar. I'm going to bring my food processor over here. I'm going to put them in my food processor. I just don't want it to be in the way. There we go. If you guys are interested, I could make, if you really want coconut oil soap and you yourself don't make soap, I could oh, I could make coconut oil soap for laundry detergent and put it in my shop. I'm also thinking of adding my own laundry detergent into, the, into my shop oh, pretty soon. I'm not sure when, just when life calms down a little. I'm not gonna put all of them at the same time just because I don't want my food processor to have a hard time in blending them. Now when you do make, if you do make soap and you wanna make coconut oil soap for laundry making detergents, you have to make sure that you're not going to have any extra fat in your soap. Preferably it is better to have it as they call it, lye heavy. That means if you have a little extra lye in the soap that has not turned, that has not saponified with the oils. I'm just gonna wash my hands because I feel like it irritates my skin, of course, because it's a little bit on the lye heavy side. So I just I washed my hands, put on some lotion, and I'm gonna be wearing some gloves. My skin also is super sensitive, so even though, even if this is not lye heavy, because it is super, it is a soap that does not have excess oils in it that are not saponified. My skin gets irritated. I made it at 0% super fat, so we don't have any super fat in here. In fact, I might have a little bit less oils than what the recipe recommended. The reason why you would want to make sure you want to make sure that you don't have excess fats in your soap or super fats because you don't want those fats to stick on your clothes when you are washing and the reason why you want to have it a little bit on the lye heavy side is because the lye is what cleanses your clothes. It is going to cling on to any oils or um, biological material that is on your clothes and it's going to break it down. So I'm just going to turn on my blender my food processor. Okay. And I'm just going to take oops, excuse me. And 
see it in this bowl right here. I got one that didn't get crushed. So it's okay, we'll put it in the next time. And I'm gonna bring a spatula because I can't take this out. See, it got stuck. I'm gonna bring a spatula. Okay, so I finished uh, powderizing the soap and I did put a mask on because <laughs> this stuff can get sort of airborne and the smell is a little bit too much for me because I didn't put any scent in the soap and I don't know if what I'm smelling is a lie also or not and I'm just kind of doing this with my hand to kind of break up any clumps that have formed while it was being powderized. We're going to add now the washing soda and this is the Arm & Hammer washing soda. I will put a link to down to all the things that we're going to be using for this laundry detergent. You could also find these in your local grocery stores except for one item that I'm using which you probably don't need but I like to add it in my laundry detergent anyways. Okay, so my washing soda is kind of clumped up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run it in, in the food processor again just to kind of break it down a little. <laughs> I don't know if you can see but this stuff is airborne so that's why I have the mask on. And we're going to add three cups of this uh, of the washing soda. If you guys hear any noise, I have my door open. The neighbors are working on their property. So, one. You guys see that? Yeah, that's why you need to wear a mask if you're putting this stuff and pulverizing it or when you're going to be mixing. This is what happens when you don't let it rest. See it? Yeah. You don't want that in your lungs. So I got, whoops, got three cups of baking soda. I keep saying baking soda, washing soda. Three cups of washing soda. We're going to need also borax. This is going to help whiten, like brighten your clothes and it's going to help remove the stains. We also need three cups of this. Like I said before, I'm going to be leaving links for everything that we're using today so that you guys can get it yourselves if you want to make your own soap, laundry detergent, or by the time I upload this video, I might have laundry detergent in my store. Three. After this, we're going to add our baking soda. And This time it's baking soda. <laughs> so this is baking soda. We're going to use one cup of baking soda and this is going to help eliminate odors. There we go. Now at this time you can stop and mix it or add in your essential oil or fragrance if you're using fragrance or essential oil. But this is not where I'm going to stop. I'm going to add one more ingredient before I do this. So right here I have sodium tripolyphosphate and it is an inorganic compound. It is a sodium salt of the polyphosphate penta anion, which is the conjugate base of triphosphoric acid. So this is used in laundry detergents so that uh, to, to stop the soap gunk from sticking to the washing machines and to your clothes. And now you don't have to use this, but I'm using it. And it, it says also that it has no health effect, you know, if it's used in a low quantity and um, it is safer than um, the rest of the phosphates. It is. Um, it, it, the toxicity, it says right here, the toxicity of the polyphosphates is low, as lowest LD50 after oral administration is 1000 milligram 
per kilogram of body weight. But it does irritate the eyes and um, and the nose, and that's why I'm wearing. Also, has very little environmental effect. So this is why I'm wearing a mask and the goggles. So I'm going to add one cup of sodium tripolyphosphate into this mix. And like I said, what this does is it prevents any soap gunk from sticking onto your clothes into your washing machine. So that's what it does. So it essentially it gives you cleaner clothes and a cleaner washing machine. Help the pipes on making it a more HE efficient. And I do use this mixture in my HE washing machine. Okay. So now that everything is in, what I'm going to do is just mix it in. I'm probably just going to mix it with my hand. It's probably better. Mix it in like this, and then I will be adding the essential oil. I just want to make sure that everything is equally uh, mixed and proportionally in good proportion. We don't want, you know, parts with no soap and parts with washing soda, parts with no washing soda. That's not going to give us a good laundry detergent. Okay, so now it's turn to add in our essential oil or fragrance oil if that's what you're using. So the two essential oils that I'm going to be using are lavender essential oil and eucalyptus. I thought this will make a fresh, nice scent. Okay, so I added in close to one ounce of lavender essential oil and I'm going to add in about 0.5 ounces of eucalyptus. This smells so nice. I might add some more later, but I think this should be enough. We'll see. When you're putting, when you're using essential oils, you don't want to use a plastic container um, to pour it in because it will eat through the plastic, and then you have essential oil running everywhere. And that's not fun. Okay, so I'm just going to just add it in slowly, little by little, and kind of rub it in. I should probably put on my mask again and my goggles. Now if you have a big mixer, you can put it in there and it'll do the job for you, like a KitchenAid, but you don't want to be putting essential oils in your KitchenAid, um, unless it is dedicated for soap making. You might ask why am I giving all this information for free, and the reason is, I think People should be able to be self-sufficient if they choose to. And today with all the big the big companies and you know it feels like we kind of lost the art of survival, the art of making things ourselves. We don't know a lot about most of the things that we used from a day-to-day basis and it is good to have that knowledge at least so that in case if we are in that situation where we desperately need that information we, we will know how to do it and if you don't want to do this at least you're learning and you can buy laundry detergent from my store which I will be putting the link to in the description box. And you just want to mix it really well. I'm just going to take a little bit right here, kind of rub it in there, take all that essential oil out of there. Now I'm just going to use both hands. 
and mix it really well. If I wasn't recording this video, this wouldn't take me that long. It's really easy. You just kind of have to make that room for it to make it that time for it. I can smell it through the mask, which means it's pretty strong. I probably don't need to add any more essential oil. I'm just going to keep doing this until it is well mixed and until I feel confident like it doesn't need any more mixing. And then we're going to put it in a container. Now to use this, you're going to need one tablespoon um, for a small load and two tablespoons for a big load. In your washing machine and you just put it in a place where you normally put your laundry detergent and it will just take it and disperse it and wash your clothes <laughs> okay so now I'm done mixing it and I'm going to transfer it into this container right here with a lid and I usually keep a tablespoon spoon scoop in with it. I don't think this is all going to fit in here. Whatever is left I'll put in a Ziploc bag and save it for later. Oops. I guess I was wrong. It, it, it all did fit in here. Okay, that's awesome. And this is it. Our very own laundry detergent. And like I said, to use it you just need one tablespoon for a small load and two tablespoons for a large load. And I just normally keep the tablespoon in here with it and cover it. Now this is not the tablespoon for it, I have a different one. Now this is a messy job, but this will last you for a really long time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I probably have marks on my face from the goggles and the mask. That's okay. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned a lot from it. And um, if you just want to buy the laundry detergent for my soap, I could leave a link for it down in the description box below. I'll try to add it as soon as possible into my shop. And also I will leave a link, like I said, for all the things that I've used in this video. And if you like what you see here, just hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of whenever I upload a new video, just hit the bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload a new video. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode. Bye.